renewable energy. I'm a big fan. <laughs> We're going to talk about work and energy. And first of all, let's start with energy. And energy is defined as, at least one of the definitions, it's the ability to do work. And that's going to be an important piece. Now, if you don't know what work is, that sort of doesn't really help you. But let's talk about this. So we've got E equals energy. And what is energy measured in? It's measured in joules. So that's the important piece here. And there's lots of different kinds of energy. You've probably been hearing about them. So there's kinetic, for example. That means moving. Potential means stored. There's thermal energy. There's all sorts. But it's important to know that uh, we're going to be using this idea right here in order to do work. So maybe let's talk about what work is. Work is when you apply a force and you cause a displacement. So what do we mean by this? We've got an equation for it, and luckily it's in your data booklet, so it goes like this. W equals F times S times cosine of theta. Um, and I should maybe take away the dots because it's not technically a dot product if you're really... Uh, a purist about this stuff. Um, it's Fs cos theta. So that's the important piece to hear. This is in your data booklet. So let's define our variables then. So W is the work done, and work is a form of energy. That means it's got the same units. This is the most important thing, because I think a lot of people get really tripped up with what work is. I just think work, at least, it's, it's measuring energy. It's measuring joules. So W is just the work done, and it'll be like the work done against friction or work done against gravity. You do work against something. Okay, so what about the rest of it now? So this right here is an applied force, that's F, and that's going to be measured in newtons. We've got S is the displacement, which is measured in meters, and theta is the angle between the force and the displacement, and that's measured in degrees. So that's really all we're going to need here. So let's look at an example. Let's assume that you have a book of mass 2.5 kilograms in your hand, okay? Can you assume that that's, for example, let's assume my phone is, you know, that's your book. So think of this right here. Now, we've got two different parts. We've got what is the work done against gravity if you raise the book vertically 1.2 meters, and the other one is if you move it horizontally 1.2 meters. So what's going to happen? If I raise it vertically, let's just think about the different forces acting on this thing right here. So of course there's gravity going down, but what's my applied force? The force I have to apply is going to be up. That's going to be my applied force. That's the force that I have to give this thing. Because if I didn't, it, this book would just be in free fall. So because of that, my applied force then is going to be up. And also, what's the direction of the displacement? Well, the displacement is also up right, because if I've moved it vertically. Therefore, what is my equation? Remember the equation goes W equals Fs cos theta. But if they're up and up, what does that tell me? That tells me that theta is going to be equal to zero degrees. Oh. And what does that mean? Cosine of zero is one. So because of that then, I can just say, ah, that means then that work is just going to be F times S. In other words, the applied force times the displacement. So let's figure that out. So the work is going to be, let's see, the applied force. This force has to be equal to and opposite the weight of the book. In other words, mg. You know, that's the net force going down, so to speak. Or not the net force. That's the gravitational force down. I have to apply at least that to make it go up. So that means I'm going to call it then just mg. Do you see that's my F here? So this, maybe I'll just make it clearer here. This this was F. And of course, I'm multiplying that by S, which is my displacement. All right, so let's put in all the numbers then. So that means, let's see, W equals mass, which is 2.5. Okay, all that times uh, 9.81. Let's make sure that 0.5 is as clear as I can make it here. It's not looking very clear at all. Just wait a second. There we go. And all that times the displacement, which is 1.2. So I take my trusty calculator out, and I figure this out. So let's see, so it's 2.5 times 9.81, and all that times 1.2, and I end up with an answer of 29.43. But now I'm only allowed uh, two significant figures right here, so I'm going to say this 9 right here is going to probably just stay the same. That means I can just say that uh, this right here is going to be, work is going to be just 29 joules. So that's what I'm going to have in the end. So work is 29 joules. That's how much energy you have to expend in order to do this, right? That's how much work you have to do against gravity. Okay.
So uh, that and it's against gravity because it's going up. So okay, work is twenty nine joules. There we go. What about this one? What about the book moving horizontally? So let's think about carefully this book. Let's just focus on the book right here. So this right here is the book. What are you doing to it? You're still applying the uh, the applied force in order to keep it from dropping. Your applied force is still upwards. It's not obvious. Okay, but you're actually still having to give it an applied force up. If you don't do that, it's just going to drop down. However, your displacement, I mean, we haven't said you're necessarily accelerating. You might just be moving at a constant speed. Your, your displacement is to the right, let's say, or to the left. It doesn't matter. What does that mean? Well, that means that when we use this equation here, W equals Fs cos theta, what does that tell us? That tells us that theta is going to be equal to 90 degrees. And what's the cosine of 90 degrees? Do you remember? It's just zero. So because of that, that makes this piece right here cancel out, becomes a zero, and zero times anything gives you zero. In other words, in this case here, you've done zero joules of work. Okay, you've actually just, the answer is just a zero. Work is zero. So we've got another example now with work, and I put this in here, we've got a bear, so I put this in here. Sometimes these big words I don't fully understand in order to make myself sound more photosynthesis. <laughs> Cute. All right, so we have a horizontal force that's applied to a bear in order to displace it horizontally. So that what does that mean? We've got our applied force, okay, this applied here like this on the bear, and we've also got the uh, displacement is in this direction. And remember what that does. Our equation for work done says F S cos theta. Remember that since theta, in this case here, is going to be zero degrees, there's going to be no angle between them. Well, there is the angle. The angle is zero. And remember that cosine of zero equals one. So what does that mean? That means I end up with just, in this case, work done is just F times S. All right, let's see if that's gonna help us out here. We've at least figured out this piece. So we've got, uh, we're gonna displace the bear horizontally. So we know S is 10. And the question is, what's the work done to move the bear? And we have a graph. Keep in mind the graph's got X in meters. But look carefully. Look, we've got kilo newtons. Just be careful there. Those are 1,000 newtons here. So in other words, this is 4,000, this is 2,000, and so on. So what am I going to do with this? What can I do with this graph? If I don't know what to do with it, try the gradient, try the area under the curve, and think which one helps you. Well, if I've got W equals Fs, this is F, this is uh, displacement here. Does that make sense then that the area under this graph is going to be helpful? Because that's going to tell me these things times these things. Because gradient would be this over this. If it was like F over S, I would then be taking the gradient. But it's F times S. So that means I'm going to take the area. Okay, so I know then that the area under the curve is going to be equal to Fs, which tells me my work done. All right, so I need the area under the curve then. So that means I have Fs then. It's going to be equal to the area under the curve. And what's the area under the curve? It's one half base times height. So let's see, it's going to be the base, which is 10 meters, so 10, times the height, which is 4,000 newtons. Don't forget about the 4,000. All that divided by 2 because it's a triangle, only because of that, okay? So that's why I'm actually finding the area under this curve right here. And if I do that, let's see, I get uh, this is... Uh, 4,000 times 10 is 40,000, divided that by 2 is going to be 20,000. So that means then I can say that that's my work done, because remember, W equals this Fs, which equals this. So that means finally then I can say that the work done is just going to be equal to 20,000 joules. There we go. And finally, let's just go over energy here. So if you've got kinetic energy, which is the moving energy, uh, you've got this equation here on your data booklet that goes EK equals 1 half mv squared. Okay, that's good. But you also have another one. You've got another one you could use instead if you wanted to, and it has to do with momentum. It just goes P squared over 2m. That comes become P, you can do it yourself if you want. P is equal to mv, so if you take P squared, that's m squared v squared. If you divide it by m, it gives you uh, mv squared, and divided by 2, it gives you half mv squared. So this is the other equation. You can use either of them, depending on if you know mass and velocity, or if you know something about the momentum instead. All right, what about the potential energy that's stored in a spring? Well, that one right there is also in your data booklet, and it just goes like this. E-H. H stands for Hooke's Law. So it's 
you know, like your hook's energy, so to speak. It's just going to be half k instead of this m, but it's going to be uh, delta x squared. And so that's going to be it. That's all you need. That's also in your data booklet. And finally, we're going to talk about your potential energy, your stored energy due to gravity. And this comes from lifting up an object. So if you take an object and you lift it up, you know, then there's going to be some sort of change in height here. And that's going to be the key part here. So normally people know it as E equals MGH, but on your data booklet, it actually goes delta E. And keep in mind, it's potential. We put a little P here. E equals M times G times delta H. I still consider it just E equals MGH. But there we go. Well, and finally, we've got this really important piece right here. I could not stress this enough. This right here is super important. Total mechanical energy. In other words, we're going to call this E total. And when I say mechanical energy, I just mean the sum of these ones here. So EK plus EH, in case there's uh, some kind of spring, plus EP. And this one right here is going to be constant. In other words, this right here is going to be conserved. So the total, you know, the total amount will be this. So you might have an example where something is, you know, held up at a certain height, for example. So let's say it's, it's up at rest, but it, it's been raised up a certain value. Then it's got gravitational potential energy. It's got, it's got energy because it's sitting there, right? That this EP equals MGH, but it's got no kinetic. And when you let it go, what happens, of course, it's a gravitational potential energy because it's conserved. It ends up going somewhere. It gets converted to kinetic. In other words, what happens, of course, is as it goes down and down and down and faster and faster, it has less and less stored energy, but has more and more kinetic. So this is how you can solve a lot of kind of questions. When you have this energy, the total energy is conserved, but it can change form. It can go from kinetic to potential or potential to kinetic, whichever. And that's why I put this one here down, this picture. Potential energy is the cat, for example, like this left one here. He's going to bite it. Kinetic energy is nothing. And, of course, as he bites it, what happens afterwards? Of course, it goes like this. This is an example of, like, you know, trying to visualize so, like, you know, one can go to the other. There we go.